We're in Seoul for 48 hours and you already know the first stop, Korean barbecue. After an awesome 10 days in Japan, we landed in Seoul, South Korea. We really enjoyed our flight on Korean air and the vibes got us excited to explore the city. This may also go down as one of our best airport experiences. We got through security, got our checked bag, got our train ticket and are boarding the train nonstop express to Seoul in like under what, like 20 minutes? Very fast. Very fast. Loving you already, South Korea. Seoul has been high on our list of places to visit and we had high expectations for the social city with delicious food and lively culture. Thankfully, Seoul did not disappoint. We are in love with this city and Lauren is officially addicted to K-dramas. Here's everything we got up to in Seoul for 48 hours, starting with the famous Korean barbecue. They gave me this bag, I have no clue what to do with it. It pulled on the sleeve of my jacket, so I'm assuming she wanted me to take it off, but I don't know. Let's eat. Once we sat, all the dishes immediately started coming out. We didn't think we ordered that much, but dish after dish was delivered until finally the main attraction arrived. Usually you grill these up yourselves, but I guess we looked like we needed some help. We started with the best cut of steak, which was out of this world. Then it was on to round number two and round three. This was the best first meal we could have asked for in Seoul. After dinner, we headed across town to Myeongdong. And if you thought that we would be full from that dinner, you thought wrong. Hey, we got Bingsu from Seoul Bing. This is the King Mango Ice. And it's basically like a milk shaved ice with a whole bunch of toppings. This thing is like the size of my head. It's huge, but it looks so delicious and I cannot wait to dive in. So good. We are extremely full now, so we're gonna walk it off around the Myeongdong district. Looks like a really lively area, lots of shops, bright signs, bright colors, loud people. Total contrast to Japan, so we're looking forward to exploring. Let's go. This area is known for its casual eateries and luxury shopping, but it's most popular for foreign tourists by being a great place to buy Korean skincare products. And if you're looking to stock up, this is the motherland. A really great benefit of shopping in this area is that a lot of the stores are tax-free, so you give them your passport and they take the tax off right there. I am going wild over all of these Korean skincare stores. Garrett keeps getting annoyed and leaving me. Oh, there she goes again. I'm having a great time. <laughs> yeah, I just keep going to all the snack stores and eating all the food. It's good. It's a really cool area to walk around. We're really just enjoying our first evening here in Seoul. So far, we're Seoul impressed. Okay, so this place. What's the name of it? This morning, we're exploring Jungbukung Palace. So that's probably not how you pronounce it, that's where we are this morning. Gyeongbokong. 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 Looks pretty neat. Gyeongbok Palace is probably one of the most iconic landmarks in Seoul. Built in 1395, this place was once the heart of the Joseon Dynasty and the center of Korean culture. Today, it's a must-visit destination for anyone interested in art, history, and architecture. To get into the palace, it costs 3,000 Korean won per person. However, if you dress in traditional Korean clothing, you can get in for free. And I feel like that was a missed opportunity for me and Lauren. It's raining pretty hard here right now, but this place still is beautiful even in the rain. All this exploring is making us hungry. Let's go get some food and coffee. If you're near the Gongbokong Palace, we highly recommend this coffee shop. Up next, we're gonna go get some Michelin guided dumplings and noodles. This place opens at 11 a.m. We got here around 10.45. There's already a line and people are storming in, so really excited to try this. We are next. I can see all the food and it looks so good. I hit my head again. <laughs> So we are sitting upstairs, which means we get to sit on the floor. Here it's like flexibility continues to be a problem in Asia. <laughs> These dumplings are huge. Delicious. And the floors are heated. It's the perfect meal for a rainy day. Those noodles were so delicious. Those jumbo dumplings and the hand cut noodles both were absolutely incredible. We are once again super full, so we're gonna go 
walk around the Hunnuk village next. On the way to Hunnuk village, there are a lot of shops to browse through and Lauren found more skincare products. Hunnuk village is a residential area consisting of traditional Korean housing that used to be occupied by government officials during the Joseon dynasty. This is a beautiful area to walk through in Seoul, just remember to be quiet. You have to whisper here, but we're in the Hunnuk village, Picture Street, and it's very beautiful. ASMR, Whisper Street. We stopped to get some coffee at Mass Coffee, and these coffees are <laughs> ginormous. I was not Mass expecting it. Hey, big coffees. <laughs> Cheers. We tried to go to Cafe Onion, but the line was crazy, and I know it's been all over the internet, and I feel like it's probably a little hyped up. If you've been and it's not hyped up and it's actually that great, let me know. This coffee is really good, and it's right next to it. So if you also decide to tap out on the Cafe Onion line, we recommend this place. You've probably noticed by now that our 48 hours in Seoul consists of a lot of food. We're headed to the Gwangjang Market to try some of Korea's best street food. And just really excited. I've saved a lot of room in my stomach for this, so we're gonna get a lot of good food and take you along with us. Tteokbokki, tteokbokki. Lauren's excited for the tteokbokki. Tteokbokki. I'm excited for the gimbap. I just like to say it. Tteokbokki. I was so excited for the tteokbokki. I've been watching this K-drama and they talk about tteokbokki like every episode, but it was a total disaster. I was dropping it everywhere. I didn't get to anywhere. just focus on eating the tteokbokki. I have my chopsticks upside down. Sauce went everywhere. I splashed it on Garrett's legs. It got on his pans, but it was so delicious and it totally lived up to the hype. I was thinking that I wasn't gonna like it because I don't traditionally like like the rice cake stuff, so like the really like chewy, but it was perfect. The texture was amazing. You really have to give it a try. Get some gimbap to dip in the sauce. You won't regret it. Delicious. Up next. This mung bean pancake. It's like a hash brown with some legumes in it. Got that like crunchy outer hash brown. Very good. Good morning. It's our final day here in Seoul before we travel back to the United States. Today we're gonna head to the Hongdae area to do some shopping and hang out at some cafes. All right, we were leaving the station and the smell of these like literally just drew me in. They look delicious. We got it in assorted mix. I think they're like pancake or waffle batter filled with like red bean, peanut, cheese. She gave us an assortment, but I'm gonna snack on these while we walk around because none of the coffee shops really open till about 10 o'clock here. So riding the subway is actually pretty simple. To get around Seoul, we recommend you download the Naver map app. It's similar to Google Maps, but works a lot better in Seoul. It will tell you how long it takes to get from place to place and what subway line to take. The kiosk and subway station have English translations, so if you don't know the local language, you can still get around. First stop was Cafe Grange. This joint had some great coffee, good vibes, but if you're a tall king like me, watch your head. Second stop was this Hanuk style cafe. I knew this place was good when all the Instagram girlies were waiting outside. This place was very unique and even had views overlooking a courtyard. The coffee was on point. A few other cafes we recommend in the Hongdae neighborhood is this Harry Potter themed cafe and a cartoon and PC cafe. So Seoul has some amazing coffee shops and all the food and coffee is delicious. All right, we just got back to our hotel room. We got to pack up and head to the train. We're signing off here. We had a great time in Seoul, but now it's time to head back home and go back to work. So <laughs> see you guys in the next video. Bye.